Hello and welcome to video 19 in my Rigging in Maya series. Before you build any rig, it's important that you take some time to check the model you're working with, while also making a plan of how to approach the rig itself. Chances are you will be given a model to use, be this from another member of your team or a client. You may even be using a stock model downloaded from somewhere online. The problem is you can't always guarantee the model is animation ready. People build 3D models in very different ways, and if your model isn't set up correctly, you are just leaving yourself open to a world of pain further down the line. So in this video, I want to talk through some key areas you need to check before you create your first joint. We will also come up with a plan of action for the K9 model we will be rigging over the next series of videos. Before we get started, I wanted to tell you about the Ant CGI Club. Joining the club is a way for you to help support the future of this channel as it will allow me to dedicate more time to creating new content just for you. But that's not all, you can also earn yourself exclusive rewards. These include course assets, models, rigs and custom made scripts as well as access to the members only area of the Ant CGI Club Discord server. You can also now claim a 10% discount on any Ant CGI merchandise. There are two ways you can join. The first is to simply click the join button below this video and become a member of this YouTube channel. The second is to head over to my Patreon page and support me there. Alternatively, you can visit the link on the screen or the description below to find out more. Okay, so you've been given a model and asked to rig it. Here we have a Labrador model, let's call him Dino. I built this especially for this course but that doesn't mean the model is perfect. First off, he is a subdivision surface model, which essentially means he is a low resolution model, which is smoothed by Maya, to give the illusion that he is more complicated than he actually is. All we do is press three to activate smooth mesh mode. On the surface, he looks good. You will notice the ears are flat and the tail is pointing out, this is good because it means these areas will be much easier to rig. They will also be better for the animator to pose later. If these were modelled in a pose, so the tail relaxed and the ears flopping around his head, they wouldn't deform as nicely when animated, because you are then rigging working with bent and twisted geometry. The next things to check are the legs. These need to have a slight bend in the knees so the IK will work properly. As you know, the bend in the IK joints dictates how the limb will bend. If the limb is straight, then you will have problems later as the IK will bend in an unpredictable way. Okay, initially the pose looks good. Next I want to check how symmetrical the model is. 99% of the time you will be given a model which is the same on both sides. Now this seems a simple thing to do, but I've had models before where on first glance they look symmetrical, but when you check the wireframe, they aren't, they are just off slightly. This is usually best seen from the side view. As you can see here, the opposite side on the model doesn't match up, even though this model is supposedly symmetrical. Now I'm not sure how the artists managed to do this, because it's just a case of mirroring the model. But if it isn't perfectly symmetrical when it's supposed to be, you will have major issues later when mirroring your rig and also with skinning weights. You could essentially end up having to do twice as much work because you'll need to work on each side separately. One thing I ask my clients is if they are sending me a model where the parts are mirrored, that they are also combined into a single mesh. So for example, the left and right arms are a single model rather than two separate ones. Again, this just makes rigging easier as you can then mirror the skin weights later, which is good when you're having to work with fiddly things like fingers. It's a small thing, but just making sure the model is positioned correctly too can save time. Just snapping it to the grid so it's aligned perfectly means mirroring joints and skin weights will work better because both sides match across the world route. Again, this seems like a simple thing, but I've been sent so many models over the years where the model isn't actually at the world route and it's off slightly, so it's worth checking. So next we need to investigate the topology. If I just turn wireframe on, 
When it comes to the topology, it's always best to have a nice clean model. What I mean by this is a good edge flow which will deform well. One problem I see time and time again is dense geometry, so in areas like this, where we have a relatively flat surface. There will be multiple divisions which simply aren't needed. This will affect the overall performance, plus it can result in pinching and creasing in areas where you don't need it. My general rule is if it doesn't add to the silhouette, or help when deforming, it's not needed. The fewer polygons you have in a model, the better. On the flip side, we can see that the tail probably does need a few more edge loops. As it stands, the tail won't bend well with these divisions, so I would be tempted to add a few more in. We can do the same with the knees. These may look okay here, but once bent, the outer polygons will open up, so it might be worth just adding an extra edge loop to help round those areas off. When I build models, I always try to match natural muscle lines. What I mean by this is to try and make the edges flow as the muscles would. What this means is when the model deforms, it will stretch and twist in a more natural way as it mimics the muscles moving beneath the surface of the skin. What it also means is that creases and folds will form, again, in more natural positions. Now it isn't always possible to add in every single muscle, but I try to block in the main areas. So here around the front shoulder, I've tried to get the edges to flow in a similar direction. The same around the neck. I have a couple of images that are on the screen now, which I use when I'm building humans, which help to guide my edge flow. So I will upload these for Ant CGI Club members to download and use. One other thing I like to do before I build the main rig is to throw in a couple of joints and do some quick tests, just to see how areas will deform. It doesn't need to be anything fancy, but it saves you having to edit the model later or go back to the client to ask for model revisions further down the line. Let's look at the head next. So just as before, the edge flow should follow natural muscle lines, especially around the eyes and lips. You almost have to imagine how these areas will deform when they are rigged. So around the eyes you need the brows to wrinkle, raise and fall. The lips need room to move and form all the needed expressions. In this case he needs to growl and bare his teeth, so the edges should move up without making the surrounding areas pinch or deform badly. The eyelids are another important area to check. Chances are you will always be sent models where the eyes are open, which is fine, but more often than not you will find there isn't enough topology to allow the lids to close. It's an easy fix though, all you need to do is add more edge loops, but again check with the client first. So these are just a few of the areas I look for in a model before I start to build a rig, and sometimes the client is happy for me to make the adjustments, but it's always a good idea to check. It may be that they need to update the model on their end first, because it affects other areas of the pipeline. It's also important to say that you can't always predict how the model will work with your rig, and there will be areas that need adjusting as you work. I'm sure we will find a few over the next series of videos, so we will see how this model holds up. I also have a slightly more in-depth video on topology over in my CG tips section, so please check that out for more information. So we've gone through and checked the model, so next we need to decide how we are going to rig it. First you have to discuss exactly what the client needs. Do they need stretchy limbs? What about a full facial rig? How about some dynamics in the tail so it follows as the dog moves? They could just want a simple rig with just the jaw opening and closing, because this particular character isn't seen up close. Alternatively, they could want a full rig, with the ability for the dog to form phonemes, because it needs to talk. You never know. As this is a more advanced section of the course, we will be pushing this rig as far as we can. But obviously, we're not going to go too complicated just yet. What I want to do is show you a rig I created back in 2015. I think, for a TV show called Wolfblood. Now, I have created more quadruped rigs since then, but this is the only one I had permission to show, so huge thanks to Jellyfish for that. 
It does, however, have a lot of the elements we will be adding into our Labrador Dino, but the systems I use now are slightly different and more advanced. So let's see what we have. Obviously, we have quadruped limbs, which we can move around, and these have the standard IK and FK support. What we will do is use a more ribbon based system and then we can add more flexibility into the limbs. There's a basic foot roll, but we can do a lot more than that. And we can spread the toes. Again, these are just basic controls, so we can do better with a lot more functionality and easier controls for the animator. What I would also like to do is add in the ability to flatten the paw too. So as it walks, there's the illusion of pressure being added. The spine is nice and flexible and also has IK and FK controls. I also want to use a ribbon based system with the spine for our rig, which will give more flexibility and make the movements more organic. It's important to point out that this rig isn't ribbon based, whereas the one that we will be creating will be, so that will add another layer of complexity, but also make it more flexible and natural looking as it moves. There is also a control here which allows the rib cage to expand and contract, so we will add that in too, so Dino can breathe. Although we might look at a better way to implement that, at the moment it's just joint based with this rig. The head and neck work well and give a good degree of flexibility. If we open the jaw, there are some basic lip controls, but I think I'd rather achieve this using ribbons with our rig. The tongue is also okay, but a little limited. So again, I think we can use ribbons to make this more flexible. The same around the eyes. I would like to use more ribbons here to get more control over the cheeks and brows. So as you can tell, I'm leaning a lot more towards using ribbons in this rig. Again, because I feel like it'll give us a lot more flexibility. And it may also mean we have to rely less on blend shapes. Moving to the tail, I actually added three systems in here. We have FK and IK. Plus some dynamics. As you can see, this makes the tail follow as the body moves. If I adjust these, and increase the two pose attribute, We can make the tail follow the pose, even though it's being influenced by the dynamics. This is something we will add into our rig, and I think we'll do the same with the ears too. So looking back at that rig has given us some good starting points with our rig, but we will push it further as you will see. So here we have just a quick look at another quadruped limb, which is similar to what we are going to be building. 
It's ribbon based as ours will be, so that will give us that flexibility we need. But there's also stretchiness and there are some extra controls so we can tweak the shape. Again, this just gives the animator more flexibility. So we've now checked the model and have a plan in place for the rig. So what we'll do in the next video is we're going to start building the base skeleton. Well, we've come to the end of another video. Thanks for watching right to the end and if you found this video useful, please hit that like button to show your support. While you're at it, you could also subscribe and enable notifications so you're kept up to date with future videos and community posts. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below and I will try my best to reply. Alternatively, you could post them in the Ant CGI Club Discord server where I spend more of my time. You can find an exclusive invitation to join in the description below. Remember that you can also join the Ant CGI Club to help support future videos while also earning yourself exclusive rewards. Alternatively, if you would just like to show your appreciation, why not treat me to a coffee at my coffee page? The link is on the screen now and in the description below. Thanks again, this is Ant CGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.